open up mm. and when you talk to people and people start knowing you you know they they understand that you are um, you know responsible with your work and dependable and stuff like that they give you different opportunities to uh, I never like doing the same thing the same thing have a boring job of every day thing. so um, you know working in different uh, departments within the marketing group <coughs> Help a, a, a ton of project uh, of, of product managers. The product managers take the products from an idea to the market and they are responsible for improving their sales and everything in every category of the product. So, working with the product, product managers a lot. Um, yeah, we have at least, at least 12 different laptops. So, mm -hmm. working with each of them. To differentiate, you know, this laptop is great at this, but it's different than this other one. Like they call it a messaging architecture. Mm -hmm. So, like, like with a spreadsheet, you create the, the good, better, best, and then you have to create content so that you know the low, uh, your low end product, you know, has to be talked about in a not as you know polish or high end.
Um, what I feel, um, you know, you guys are here because you want to better yourselves, right? I mean, you've gone through your day, you could be being with friends or having dinner or fixing yourselves to go somewhere or whatever, but you've decided to come here. So what I wanted to do more than anything is to create a safe space where you guys, nothing that you say here, I'm gonna take anywhere and I'll share as much of my experience and my um, you know, knowledge as I possibly can. Um, but we wanna have an engagement session. I didn't come here to just talk at you, but to figure out with you um, um, the challenges or the, or the areas of your interest and such. Um, I wanted to um, start the conversation with a show of hands of who all owns a business here. Does that have to be official? No, it doesn't have to be official, but you're working on your business already? Very good. Who has a dream here of owning their own business someday? Wow, all of you. Very good. No wonder you're in the entrepreneurship uh, program, huh? Very good. So I can just, you yeah, don't have a click? Do you want me to click for you? I can do that. No, no. Okay, so enough about me. We are going, actually, we are actually going to um, talk about, you know, you're interested in building your businesses, so we're gonna talk about what, top of your mind, why do you think, I mean, we live in the best country in the world, I can tell you for, experience. I was born and raised in Spain. Uh, when I was your age, even when I was in high school, I knew the place where I live, this it was like, this is not for me. I need to find somewhere where I'm able to grow. Um, Southern Spain is beautiful, amazing, California weather, all of this. But if you're not in hospitality, if the hospitality is not your dream career, I didn't see myself there. So I came to the States, um, I studied here, and then I realized, so we live, I mean, no excuses, we live in the, of the country with the most opportunities around the world. In Houston, did you know, 40,000 companies open every year. So this could be one of you. This is a great town where you can build your business because somebody needs your goods and services because there's so much growth, so many industries, healthcare, oil and gas, technology is, is thriving these days and everything. So there is a lot of people like you that want to open their business. There's a lot of people already opening their business. The downside to this is that out of these 40,000 companies, 20,000 don't make it after a few years, right? So the purpose of me coming here today is to try to inspire you and also to give you some tactics and some advice on how you can, you know, beat the odds of 50% of companies fail within the first three to five years. Any questions before we start? What are like the common uh, issues, like because companies fail, why, why do they fail? Like, do you know, like the common issues? I touch on that, that's not the whole the thing of the, of the presentation, but one of the top ones is market product fit. You know what that is? People create things, products or services that nobody wants or nobody thinks that they need or they're new and unless you do a ton of education and a ton of promotion of these new products or services, 
they don't they don't amount to anything they don't sell so there are two niche uh, or many reasons it could be too niche it could be that the uh, they are targeting to the wrong age group or they haven't found a way to reach their target or you know is you know the execution may be terrible and they're not able to deliver you know, when you put a product out and people order it online and then you're not able to send it right away like the expectation from customers these days is very fast you know ordering and delivering to your home then you know it could be many different things but if you don't have a market product fit mm, you have it really hard most of those that's the number one reason in fact that that some of these products uh, fail okay so okay those of you that have a business or are starting already a business what what do you think you should be doing what are some of the things that you are doing to let people know are doing about your service or product um, I, I post a lot on social media, and that has really, like, grown the visibility of my brand. Okay. And then I also, like, let people know personally about, like, what I'm doing and how it can benefit them. Okay, so you start with your friends and family, right? That's the, our safe space. Some people, a lot of, a lot of girls uh, that I know, they love makeup, right? One of them came up with a makeup line. All of us are buying the makeup line just to help our friend, right? Um, that's a really good start. Social media is ginormous, especially amongst your age group, right? So that's amazing uh, things that you're doing. Anybody else wants to share what they're doing with their new business? To go onto websites like Redbubble to sell stickers. And okay. Based on, I guess, the sticker designs that sell more popular, I can sell those stickers in my own Etsy or online shop. Okay. So, so you're using Etsy as a platform, and you're looking at the trends, right? And then you're adjusting your product, right? Your stickers is yeah. your product? Mm -hmm. Okay, see, this is a great uh, example that she's got market product fit. She already knows there's people buying these stickers, right? She's already looking at what's out there that's selling, and she's adjusting her product, you know, based on those trends. That's really good. Anybody wants to share what they're doing with their business? Yes? Uh, the trends of online, I'm trying to choose between um, either starting on Etsy or a Big Cartel. I know that Big Cartel is like fully free to like buy products, and but also like it's not a marketplace, it's kind of like you have to advertise for yourself, which I feel like I am doing pretty well. Uh huh. What kind of product are you doing? Um, I'm selling like um, stickers as well, but also like um, digital like screen printing and like okay. the tips of the For brand. like, for using at your home for decoration? Or yeah, for it's, it's kind of like spread posters. Okay. Yeah. So like displaying on your walls or, yeah. you know, okay. Cool, very good, very good. Okay, these are some ideas that, from my experience, you should take into account. And, I, and I've given um, Angel the presentation so you don't have to worry about writing everything down. She can pass it along if you like, okay? It starts with a vision. You guys, um, you know, we all are in business to make money and to feed our families or to or to have makeup for ourselves. But at the end of the day, you need to put, you need to have a bigger vision and a bigger mission than just making money, in my opinion. If you, if you, in the beginning it's probably you or you and another person, but when you need to, um, you know, make your, extend your team and start hiring people, these people need to be inspired about coming to work every day and doing something. So I would ask you that you always have, you know, whether it's sustainability or whether it's helping people or whether it's, you know, part of your 
margins uh, donated to charity or something. Have a have a goal that exceeds just you know making money for yourselves, because that way people will wanna you know it's it's a lot easier to work for something that has a mission that has is is providing value to society in general. Okay. The next thing and this is so important, please. Take every opportunity to learn everything about your product category, know your competition, know the market trends, like she's saying with the stickers. Have a great understanding of your industry. Uh, you know, read on who, you know, what your main competitors, the larger ones are doing every season to continue um, work, you know, growing their business. Um, all of that is super important because you're gonna have to talk about your product and talking about your product differentiation is key. So how are you gonna talk about your products effectively if you don't know what's out there, you don't know how you're better than your competitor. This is what your customers want to hear. They can buy stickers from how many places? A ton of places, right? You're not the only person doing stickers today, right? So. Why are you, why, uh, why do I go to your channel, to your Etsy page or whatever, to buy your stickers? If you're the coolest, you're the trendiest, I love your color, uh, you give me a deal because you have a loyalty program every other purchase, for whatever reason, you have the, um, in, you know, you have the um, obligation to tell your customers how you are better than everybody else, right? So it's very important that you take every opportunity to educate yourself. The next one is really key. So I will tell you, your customers are your business, right? Without customers, um, you know, you're just wasting money and energy. So I will tell you this. The um, mediocre marketing people, they do demographics. They just worry about this person's gender, age, where do they live, how much money they make, if they have a, you know, what education level they've had, if they're married, single, with children, blah, blah, blah. That's all they care about. And the story ends there. Guess what? These people are not doing their best in reaching your, in reaching their customers. You do better when you look at psychographics, right? Understanding their lifestyle, understanding what podcasts they listen to, what books they read, what social media they're active on. It, it gives you so many clues that then you can apply to how you target and how you reach these customers. We have a lot, of, for example, um, magazines or travel magazines. Travel magazines go to an audience that's, you know, demographic wise, mostly women, high education level, well, um, you know, um, how do you say, high income level, but there's a lot of women that need those and don't travel whatsoever other than going within the US. But if you have a travel magazine, those people, that's not your customer, right? So for a, for a travel magazine, they advertise a lot online and they advertise a lot in airports. Why? Because the people that buy this travel magazines tend to travel internationally a lot. And when they travel internationally a lot, you're gonna see them in the airports. So these things are so critical for you as marketers to look at this. Many of the other businesses, if you're in cons business to consumer, you look at that. If you're business to business, you also consider thermographics, which is understanding all of that, but at a company level. But always remember, the buyer at a company is a person. This person has 
you have to, uh, you know, the more you know about their psychographics, for example, I had a Latino, um, a customer of mine was a Latino, um, and I'll talk about that more in detail later, they have a commercial facility maintenance company here in Houston, and they uh, service over 400 locations across 17 states, you know, and the guy is Latino, uh, his law firm sent him two tickets to um, a comedian, a Latino comedian. He's got a show, I cannot think of his name right now. But basically, I'm like, that is, and he loved it. This is a great example because he's Latino. They're not gonna buy just any ticket to, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know, whomever joker. They bought it specifically because he's Latino and he's, uh, you know, he came to town maybe once every three years he was in town and this guy loved it. So that little um, corporate gift, you know, get, you know, it's a big deal because it's very well um, thought out and formulated for, for this specific customer. Although it's business to business, it's a law firm that is giving uh, his client that is a, a facility, commercial facility maintenance business, but they're talking, they're all thinking, they're considered in the psychographics. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right, any questions so far? And this is where we come to the market product fit, right? What we're talking in a, a minute ago. So you need to understand your customer needs. You need to, you know, in the old days, engineers, you know, told marketing, engineers, you know, like they led the discussion in all these meetings. Nowadays, is a marketing, we are representing our customers. We are representing, we are the voice in the company representing what the customers want. I work at HP many years and, you know, engineers wanna put all the bells and whistles into everything. They wanna complicate things. They wanna, like, for the pure joy of having the latest and greatest technology. But you as a marketer, is your role to rein that down to where it makes sense, not to add more cost to your product and to rationalize, okay, this college student doesn't need the capacity of a videographer, right, to do their work for this laptop. So we need to rein that functionality, that set of features to, to the requirements of a college student versus the requirement of a videographer, an editor, that, you know, they require a lot more, you know, sophisticated systems. So that's a very important thing. Also testing your idea, you know, testing your stickers. I'm not sure what sort of business you do, but you know, having your friends and family give you feedback, right? Oh, I have this prototype, or I have this new drink that I created. Who likes it, who doesn't? And it, you know, large companies have spent tens of thousands of dollars in focus groups and you know, research, but you don't have to do that. You can, you can, use the, um, you know, you can be um, scrappy and use the resources that you have and, you know, getting your friends and family to, to support you like this is, is super, you know, inexpensive. It's just a matter of spending a little time with them and really taking down, taking down their feedback. Okay? I think I've covered this one now. Okay. Okay, next, we need to give this company a soul. Is for me what branding is. Um, um, in there, you need to understand, sort of figure out what you, uh, how you wanna communicate to the tone of voice, your 
positioning for your products, what are the most important things that you want to articulate, um, you know, that differentiation that, you know, how you resonate with each segment. For, for example, for in the facility maintenance business, a healthcare customer was very different than a, a K through 12 education customer. The a healthcare customer, especially with COVID, you cannot talk enough about sanitizing surfaces and quality control and air quality indoors and all of these things, uh, eliminating dust, all of these things, especially in the surgical spaces and things like that are so, and the labs are extremely important. Now, if you talk to a K through 12 sort of client, they did a lot of education, healthcare, and government facility. The education K through 12, who can take a guess what was the biggest concern? Like uh, kindergarten to high school? Kindergarten to, <coughs> yes, 12th grade, yes. Um, Through high school. Grades? So these guys come at night, they clean the facilities, right? You have to, you physically give them the keys to your facilities, right? These guys have kids that start, kindergarten starts like a five, four and a half or five years old. Uh, for these people, uh, intensive background checks of all the personnel, you think that'd be important? Very important. They wanted a report of everybody that comes in the building that they had gone through a full check before they put them in these facilities because there's a lot of issues, you know, kids are, you know, kids are very, um, you know, they could be easy prey. So they, they focus on that. They don't focus as much as, you know, it's gotta be quality perfect, you know, air and things like that. That doesn't, so you have, even for a, a single product of service, you have to do segmentation of your different set of customers and articulate or convey, put at the top of your pitch, the really the important things that resonate with them. And it's gonna be different for each of the set of customers that you have, okay? They have, the, your message has to be easy to understand, it has to be clear. And for me personally, I really appreciate companies and brands that are authentic and don't tell you you know, sell you the world, and then the experience is, is lacks that, you know, um, you know, doesn't or come short of what they have promised, right? So building brand identity is not just doing a logo. It's not just putting a sign outside of the building. It's coming up with a set of values of how you're gonna run your organization, a promise to your customers of, of how, like if you don't get, you, you have prom and you don't get the dress on time for your prom night, I'm gonna refund you. Even when you, you keep the dress, but I'm gonna refund you because clearly the experience was awful and you should have had that dress prior to your event, right? So that's very important for me to, to really work with clients that have integrity, that deliver, that you don't wanna work for a company that, you know, just in general, for if you start your career with working for somebody else, avoid those people where you're gonna be in a marketing role or a PR role, and they either are really bad at what they do or don't have any value to or integrity to have a customer promise because then instead of doing your job and being positive and promoting them, you your whole time is spent on making excuses because they cannot 
run an operation effectively. So I just say avoid the like the play when before you accept a job, make sure you before you even apply, make sure you look into, you know, those lab doors reviews and see enough comments out there that, you know, there's always gonna be fair people that have had a bad experience and they're gonna say, you know, ugly things about a uh, company. But if the if the feedback is consistent, be beware before you go into you know, company where you're just cleaning up because they're not able to deliver. The last thing is marketing communications, right? You will have, you know, as an entrepreneur, you will have a lot of people that want to come to you and get things for free or things, you know, because I'm your friend, you give me a discount and all this. Um, I don't, I don't recommend you go down that path because, you know, it, it just, it just doesn't bring you the, the, the good clients. So part of, you know, being an entrepreneur and not having resources of a large company, you have to get out, network, try to spread the word, and you will talk to a lot of people. And just like a salesperson, um, you don't get discouraged. You just keep your numbers. Maybe the you have to talk to 100 people before you can get a client that's worth your while. But with the rejection, you go keep going because you know at one point you're gonna get a good client that's gonna um, value you and pay you, um, you know, for your services. Like, what you what you deserve, okay? You have to um, you have to you know. F I would recommend that you look at the industry and find some of the people that are experts in the industry. Read on what they have to say. Um, you know, even um, even you know, follow them online. Even buy their books. You know, whatever um, whatever areas that you feel you know you need that, that additional uh, lift beyond your studies on how to tackle them, some things you know obviously you have to create a website you have to have collateral you have to come up with a sales pitch all of these things are critical and everything has to be you know consistent with your brand you know consistent with the sort of tone of voice that you want to portray for your business and relevant for these clients, you know, that, that talks to meeting their needs and such. And then when your company grows, you will wanna hire salespeople that do this for you instead of you having to pull all the sales work, but they require training, they require collateral, business cards, you know, um, budget for whining and dining, prospects and all of that. And, you know, that requires, you know, time, patience, resources, um, and your salespeople needs to be motivated. So, you know, going back to that mission and to really doing something beyond making money is, is important. What's collateral? Collateral? Okay. Collateral is brochures. Uh, tech specs, uh, you know, the stuff that's going around. Today in, is a digital world. Today is less and less important. But if you have a technical, for example, you're selling tractors, believe me, they're gonna ask you, can I have a spec sheet? A spec sheet shows like a picture of the product, you know, what the product is about, and then it gives you all the specifications because they need warehouses to host them, so they need to know how high they are, or you know, whatever they do, opening up the dirt, or for your agricultural, or whatever, they need to understand all these. And the, their engineering team will say, okay, yeah, this is the right product, or we want the bigger tractor, or we want the older tractor, or whatever. That's yes, marketing material. I have 
So I have passed around some brochures from HP that you can see, and I also have a set of, I'm gonna show you those as soon as we start talking about that. Um, any questions here on what you can do? You know, how important things you need to do about starting your business. That's from a marketing standpoint. This was inside. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, Angel, this was inside. Okay, so we say team effort. Remember what I said in the beginning? I directed the effort. I had a team with graphic designers, project managers, uh, uh, technical writers. We all collaborated in making this.
to make your business the brand that you want it to be. Does that make sense? Can somebody volunteer? And I forgot to mention something. I have a little gift card for the folks here that come up with good questions, um, interact, you know, engage, tell us about your, you know, challenges or your, um, you know, dream or your opportunities or whatever. So. I only have one, but I'm gonna, um, you know, pick a few of you to to fight over it at the end, um, because I want you to, you know, I'm here to to be of service to you. For me, I don't want to do a dev by PowerPoint. If you have specific challenges <coughs> or specific things that I can you know, maybe steer you in some direction today or in the future, I'm happy to to help with that, okay? So don't be afraid, you know, save environment, ask questions, you know. If I don't know, I will tell you I don't know, I'll find out more. But, you know, we wanna make this, you know, value for you guys, okay? So, but these are some of the, these are some of the elements that you gotta consider in building a brand. And the brand guidelines will have all of this spelled out because when the brand is just you and another person, it's very easy. But when you start growing a business with 20, 50, 100 employees and they're all producing stuff, they may have their own social media, you know, engagement channels and things like that. You want them to stick with the look and feel if they're talking for your brand, you know, you wanna put a consistent front and stuff. So all of that goes in the brand guidelines. And then we talked about the brand promise. The tone of voice is very important. Like, let me see. IBM is like corporate, you know, very, you know, serious talk, serious matters. What's the opposite of IBM? Can you think of a brand that's like fun and, you know, like playful and couldn't care less in some ways? Can you think of any examples? Maybe Apple, but... Uh... Apple is more the innovation <coughs> and the premium leader of the uh, IT world. Yes? Uh, I just came to mind. I'll think yes. like Ben and Jerry's. Yes. Very good. Ben and Jerry's is Ben and Jerry's is very progressive, right? Very inclusive, diverse. They want to serve all these people, all these different flavors, colorful, fun. Absolutely. What I was thinking along those lines is, um, have you seen some of the posts for um, Wendy's? That is so hilarious to me. Yes. I want to say uh, the Duolingo. Duolingo? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I need to look them up. I've heard of the name, but I haven't really seen what they have out there. There's it's the language, language, no? It's, it's, yeah, it's like, um, like learning languages and like Spanish. But they're like, they say silly stuff. So silly. <laughs> They've gone so hard. Uh, Chick-fil-A, like with their chicken marketing. Chick-fil-A, but now Chick-fil-A is weird because they're highly religious, right? Non-inclusive, they don't like LGBTQ stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then they put out these posters or these billboards everywhere making you laugh because the cows are actually, pay, you know, writing this stuff supposedly in the billboards. I, I get a kick out of the way they spell everything, right? They misspell everything, but it sounds like the right word. You know what they're saying. But they've created a whole language that is Chick-fil-A write-up that doesn't make any sense. But you get it and it's, it's funny like that. But then they have, I don't know that, I wanna support businesses that are so, you know, the square. My daughter loves Chick-fil-A, but, I do some, but not do very much. Okay, so any questions around that? The tone is clear, right? I mean, you can be, and then between IBM and these guys, like there's like 
so much in between. You don't need to be that extreme, but you choose as a as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you choose how you're gonna the values that you're gonna um, you know run your company by, and you choose what kind of voice you wanna do because you know I cannot be corporate and stuffy. I have clients that want that. When they want that, then we write like that. But how much more into you know the fun, the playful, and and you get people with humor and with being authentic. You know, it just to me is not a waste of energy and time. And you get people to like you more just being authentic and yourself. So the last point here is some of these assets you have to you you go to a trade show. You have to have your business cards, right? Now we're using this digital stuff. If there's digital stuff that you, you know, that you can replace with, more, more power for you. But these are some of the things that traditionally you need to do to, um, you know, website is so important. Like the Mexican restaurant by our house has a website now. Everybody needs to have a website. I don't care, you know, how little or how insignificant you are because this is your salesperson that's out there 24 seven <coughs> telling people what you're about. So putting good effort on the website, having, uh, having a good uh, sales pitch that effectively articulate what your business is about, I think is paramount. The rest you may do with, without, but, um, but some people, you know, this is, this is my biggest pet peeve. I introduce myself and people are like, um, oh, um, you do marketing, oh, you do pretty, pretty logos. Uh, no, lady, I don't do logos. I have a fabulous graphic designer. I talk to my client, I understand my client's needs, I understand what industry is he's in. I research everybody and their mother that's competing with this customer, and I find something that's unique and differentiated about this client of mine, and then I create a vision that I validate with him. I create a vision of, okay, we're not going corporate like IBM, but we don't have to be like so, you know, you know we don't want to go there, but, you know, this is the space that you work on, right? And they're like, yes, but not like this, or not like that, or I don't like this color. Okay, fine. But I grab all that information, and then I have a conversation with my graphic designer, and we come up with a great solution for this customer, in this industry, you know, with a competitive landscape that I understand, and, and things like that. People, Think of us as marketers, as like we make pretty stuff. They, they, they also told me, oh, you make pretty slides. This is what marketing people do, make pretty slides. No, lady, these are my slides. My slides are pretty clean, and I don't need to put flowers on them or, or anything. For me, is the giving you, um, you know, giving you matter, giving you, um, essence you know of course you have to try to be presentable you have to look professional you have to but if you don't have a message to give you know i don't care how pretty it is you know anyways um yeah that and then the other thing that is another pet peeve is like oh you do marketing oh um you help customers you do what uh Social media calendar. Social media calendar. <laughs> you have to do so much work. Social media calendar is like the sliver in the whole marketing, you know, strategy, marketing go to go to market plans. That's <coughs> just one component. You have to do everything. You have to really look at who you wanna be what company you want to bring to this world, what products, how products are going to help our customers. 
that's the most important thing. And then, once you have all that, a brand, you, you've done all of this, then you can do a social media calendar that has thought leadership, right? Not just have pretty pictures of you in the, in the hallway and in the desk. Who cares, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta provide value. You gotta provide meat, right? Essence uh, that you inform, that you entertain, that you provide some value of the person that's, uh, you know, going through the social media. Uh, you guys understand what I'm yeah. saying here? Okay, very good. Any questions before we move forward? We're gonna move on to this section of the presentation where I bring a real life scenario, okay? If you all are gonna open your, your um, businesses, you know, may apply or may not apply, but I think just hearing some of the stuff that I did and seeing the before and after may be, may be helpful for you, right? So the challenge here was, I and you will have this in your life where some things don't work and you have to pivot, you know, I was up to 20 years at HP as I mentioned, all of a sudden I'm laid off, I don't, I don't have a job, I don't know what happened, you know, cost cutting, blah, 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 whatever they want to tell you, right? Um, in my opinion, you're to an age and you're to a salary range that they rather hire somebody with less experience cut costs. But regardless, I get this job at a commercial facility maintenance company. These guys, these guys are stuck in the 90s. This is a business sample of a business card and their logo. To this day, Nobody can answer what maintenance engineering means to this day. I'm like, okay, what is maintenance engineering? This is how they present themselves to the world. They put it in the presentations, they put it in their collateral, they talk about maintenance engineering. Nobody knows where that came from or what that means, okay? That's a problem. You're trying to you're trying to talk about your awesome set of services and you introduce yourself as maintenance engineering. <laughs> so it took me like four months, I'm gonna be honest with you, it took me four months to get the CEO and the leadership team open their minds that it would be a great idea to do a rebranding work because they didn't wanna spend the money on new business cars, new, uh, you know, uh, facility signage, the uniforms, the business cars, the collateral, everything we had to reprint again. And they have uniforms, they employ over a thousand people and they have to get them all new uniforms. So because of the investment that they require, it took me four months, but we updated, we brought them to the 20, 21st century, and, and this is the before and after of the business card. And we updated maintenance and ground solutions. If somebody asks you maintenance and ground solutions, what does that mean? Is an easier say than say, oh, we, we maintain commercial buildings of X amount of size and we also have added the um, landscaping services um, to, you know, to cover, you know, to, to also have not just take care of your buildings inside, but also uh, present a nice landscaping when your customers come to your site, they, you know, they have a good, um, a good feel, you know, for your, for your facilities, extending the services, extending the services as, as well. So, uh, so this is the before and after. Collateral. Any, this 
designers here? Graphic designers? Okay, okay, look at this. They're stretching FedEx's logo. That's like the biggest no-no <laughs> for anything, any, I don't know who made this, but they gave it to me in Word, okay? And it was hideous. Our people, our integrity, and our level of care set us apart. This looks like, I don't know, it's like flat to me. Yeah, the margins on the left side are really uncomfortable. Yeah, this, right? Um, for the blue, the blue, um, the dark blue. And this? The, yeah, it's like so close. I mean, it was, it was just, I mean, I'm no graphic designer. I could have done something better than this, I'm sure. Okay, without Canva, we didn't even have Canva back then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm like, oh my God, I come from HP. Okay, I come creating this magnificent collateral, exceptional announcement uh, events and everything, and I come to. <laughs> what What did I get myself into? Okay, but fortunately, I don't know if you passed around that, but. I have a full set of, um, in a little <coughs> pocket, um, you know, two pocket uh, folder, I have um, um, collateral that speaks to the K through 12, the higher education, the healthcare, the government. They did a lot of um, churches, uh, you know, all these ministries, different segments get their different piece of collateral because, because even for imagery, like if you're selling to a church and then you put the photo of a office building, they're like, you don't know me, you don't know my niece. You just do office buildings? How do you do office buildings and, you know, like they don't even, when, when you show them the pictures, they're gonna decide in three seconds whether whether you know their industry and their needs before, you know, like they're gonna do it instantly. They're gonna judge based on the first thing that they see, like we judge when we go to a website. How many people here judge a website in the next, like within even moving away from their homepage? Like if your homepage is shit, <coughs> sorry, Get a different one or get out of business because, you know, chances are people are not gonna look anything else. So, this is where we wire, this is where we landed. And if you have a chance to see the rest, there's like, I don't know, 15 or 20 different ones, okay? Trade show. They sent me to a trade show. This is how our booth looks like. I'm used to, at HP, I'm used to like <laughs> the entire, you know, like the entire center of the floor in a whole hotel is us, right? Like you have 25 people tending, you have five set of sofas and 25 people tending to people that wanna ask you questions. And then I go to this, that's a table with two chairs, a little thing that you get, you know, I don't know, stickers and pens, and uh, if you're lucky, you get a, an umbrella, okay? And I'm like, oh my God, this is hideous. So then we work with a custom design trade show um, vendor, we created awesome photography with our own employees, where it's all in those uh, in those flyers, and we blew them up for, for the panels for the trade show. It's an open space, it's a nice furniture. You have the top there that you can see from anywhere in the whole trade show floor. You can see us because you have that canopy on top, I mean, a completely different look and feel. Any questions?
questions? And really to elevate your business image. These guys, you don't see them, you don't, you know, whatever. The, the, where you can see, like, the fleet, the vehicle fleet is a what is a is a moving advertising for the company. So each of these costs like good three thousand dollars, okay, to wrap you know with this level of detail. But I sold it to them that you know this is an investment because anywhere you're in Houston, you can see them. Also looking presentable when they come to your site, looking presentable when they're doing the um, landscaping work with the logo. It doesn't have to be so fancy or anything, but you know, a nice badge that you can recognize the employee and things like that is all consistent with the new look and feel, with the color palette, everything like that. It's a departure from what they were doing. They were just using white bands and the white bands didn't give them any recognition. And we have their website. They always looking for people, so phone for the, the phone for the HR and recruitment team, everything like that, everything thought out so that you, know, you get the word out, you have these opportunities around town to, to be showcasing the company. Before I don't know if I completed the poll, to be honest with you. For the ones of you that are going to go into entrepreneurship regardless, this is still a, a decent, I think you can learn from it for, you know, many things may not apply for your own company, but the ones that apply, you know, this is a good, you know, it can, it can be ugly and it can be mediocre and you can elevate it with a rebranding. But you guys have the opportunity with your business to start fresh, to really convey the, the, the personality, the, the, you know, the flavor of your uh, products and services and start, you know, put some thought to it. You know, we take the, the blue and the green. Can anybody tell me what the blue and green may represent with the logo? Very good, trust, confidence, the blue. That's why many software or IT companies, all of them use blue. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, green is like, calms you down. Clean, uh, green is soothing, but in this case, that's a good point, but in this case, we did it because of two things. Green represents growth, the plants, the foliage, you know, all of that but it also represents sustainability. Mm -hmm. They use the latest and greatest equipment and supplies that are more you know, eco-friendly, mm -hmm. so we wanted to also incorporate that into the whole you know, company brand. Yeah, but like, for me, I would not do red. Red is like, red is good for Target. Target does, Great with in full shopping, and here in the highway stop here, I see this redness. But red is emergency rooms, medical devices, uh, urgent stuff. You gotta have a product like that, or cosmetics too, and food too, like the tomato and ketchup and things like that are perfectly fine for red. But red is a color that, you know, is the opposite of what he's saying. It's the opposite of calmness. It's the opposite of, um, you know, serenity. You know, the things that you wanna, um, you know, you should gravitate to. So, I would caution red is a, you know, like the red, the red cups, whatever they call it, the something cups. Party cups. Yes. Uh, this. That's great because in a party you want to see something that you know this is very visible. It's great. Now, if you want to sell serenity, if you want to sell uh, 
confidence, if you want to sell trust, don't, you know, red is not some color. What does, what does black stand for? Black? Yeah. Okay, every color has a positive, like everything else, right? A positive spin and a less positive, right? So for black is, you know, a lot of women. We, say, we talk about the black dress. For cocktail parties is uh, luxurious, is um, premium, mm -hmm. you know, is elegant. But at the same time, death represents death, represents the end of something, represents, you know, you know, it really has, every person is different. Like if you had somebody, you know, you had an experience in your childhood that somebody died and you went to a funeral and everything is black for the first time, that stays in your head for forever, right? So maybe for somebody who didn't have that experience, black is just fabulous, right? But we're all different, so. Okay? Okay, if we don't have, if we don't have questions, I'm gonna go over some of my, you know, recommendations in general, right, for, you know, for helping you in your journey as an entrepreneur. Yes? Oh, about to move. Okay, yeah, we're almost there. So, um, you know, we talked about this before. Sometimes I get ahead of myself on the stuff that I want to um, convey to you that was important for me. So finding your own purpose versus selling witches, right? Um, you know, I think it's very important uh, early in your careers that you are honest with yourself. You get um, some time internalize what you're good at and what you enjoy doing and the things that you can monetize, the things that you can, you know, um, I, I wanted to, in high school, I wanted to be an artist. Um, but I didn't have, the, I didn't feel like I had the creativity, the confidence in myself. I thought I was gonna starve, right? The, the thing of the starving artist. I found, I found uh, marketing as a, I'm part of a creative process. I direct people that are graphic artists. So, in a way, I enjoy that so much. I keep, uh, you know, I keep doing artwork for as a hobby, but I still feel like what I pick for my career align with sort of my dreams, like what I enjoy doing, things like that. So find something like that, right? I will tell you, I've had to learn different things being an entrepreneur you know, funding, finance, you know, keeping your, you know, I'm like the worst, um, I would be the worst, um, how do you call that? Uh, record keeper. Or bookkeeper. Bookkeeper. Oh my God. I mean, I hate that, you know, doing the checkbook and all this stuff. That's not what I like, but guess what? As an entrepreneur, you're going to have to do things that you don't like or you have to find somebody that you pay for, but with that comes a risk that this person runs off with your money. So the more you're on top of things, the lower the risk for that. I don't know how many documentaries we are. We are 80s and 90s music buffs, and I don't know how many documentaries on groups we've seen an artist and every single one of them including Whitney Houston um, um, several British uh, what's the name of this uh, Sting several others they all had instances where their managers or their bookkeepers or their people doing their finances completely wipe off their accounts and 
and went to live in the Caribbean and ne never, you know, they lost it, period. So, you know, there'll be things that you don't like to do, but as an entrepreneur, you need to learn things and you need to know as much in different facets of the business. We should all be curious, learn as much as we can, show up every meeting knowing everything. Clients are gonna ask you for things that even don't have much of a related to what you're doing or whatever, but it's like they test you if you come prepared. Always be prepared, always think through the possibility of things that they may ask you. You have to surround yourself with positive people. We all have family members or friends that are, you know, very negative, and that doesn't help you in, you know, when the tough times in your entrepreneurial journey come, you need to surround yourself that people will cheer you up, will tell you you can do it, you know, try again and, and be there for you, and you can count on them. The other one is finding a mentor. That is really important. If you can find somebody that can open doors for you, that will do insight, that will shed some light when there's nothing, you know, you cannot see, you know, how you fix the situation or you don't have solution, just talking about it may even give you ideas, but this other person with more experience can be of amazing help to you. The other thing is our limiting thoughts. And I've had to work like on that for decades. You know, it's not that you become 21 and boom, you know everything. You think you do at that age, but throughout all of our, you know, different stages in life, you continue learning and you realize that you have these tendencies to, you know, believe in others, but then when it comes to believing yourself, and especially female, way more than male. Um, there are studies saying 90% of women, you know, perform better, but they, you know, they go to a performance review with an anxious attitude that, you know, we always think about the things, our shortcomings, the things that we didn't do perfect. But you have that open mind that, you know, or not open mind, but um, take the gener general view that maybe Everybody can improve on something, right? I mean, but you give yourself a 92 versus say, oh, just because I don't know how to do this thing well or it didn't go well this year, you know, you're a 50, right? So just just treat yourself right. Um, you know, don't let your uh, insecurities and limiting thoughts uh, hold you back because you're gonna, you're gonna have to be tough and you're gonna have to be, you know, you're gonna, get challenging situations where you need to be strong and you know, just try your best. That's all you can do. And then once you've grown your, organ your, your little business to where you need to hire other people, look at these people as a complimentary. Don't, you don't want to hire people that think the way that you are, that are good at the same things that you are and things like that. That doesn't make your team resilient and well-rounded. It's actually the opposite. Hiring people that have actually talents that you don't have, or you know, you know, whatever, are better at other things. You can put them in charge of these other functions that you don't enjoy, but um, you know, but they're good at it versus you know, just hiring people that have the same strengths or. Uh, approach to you know to your craft like you do. Okay, any question? Do you have LinkedIn? I do, I do. Yes, I'm happy to connect with you on LinkedIn. Absolutely. The last slide is just things, books that I recommend, guys that I follow, um, and you'll have these slides. You can uh, I've made them available. You you know you'll have the full deck if you like. Um, um, you know, these are these are good resources that have helped me. Um, but I'm sure you're the new generation. I'm sure you know way more tools, way more things I could learn, all the things from you. But these guys, for sure, you're not gonna 
you're not gonna uh, not learn anything from you know there's there's plenty there's plenty of uh, insights in there yes uh, I have a question. yes so um, what are like some websites that you would recommend for like help like finding advice for like cryptocurrency industry because I'm trying to help um, do business there for finding advice what do you mean by finding advice advice as in like um, I don't know okay for example like so I'm I'm running a business plan for yeah. Um, one of them, uh, she does videography. The okay. one is website creation. And then yes. the other lady does um, voice or audiobook voice, voice acting. So I'm okay. trying to help write a business plan. Okay. I will, I should have put it in here. I still haven't used their, that's why I didn't put it here actually, because I need to have that experience that is good, a good experience, right? But, there's so much, there's so many good um, reviews online. It's, a, it's an organization called SCORE, S-C-O-R-E. They offer templates for doing a business plan, for example, templates for doing a marketing plan, all sorts of, you know, like um, seminars online, an hour seminars, shorter seminars, they have a ton of resources that you can look at specifically for those kind of requests. The better service that they offer, these are all retired executives. They are willing to, for free, to all of us, they are willing to sit down with you help you write your business plan, is that what you're doing? Or help you with the challenges in your business that you have and you don't know how to address those. And in, so, you know, in finance, in marketing, in, I mean, anything related to business, in how to get your CRM going, or how to, you know, different things. They are an excellent resource. I'm only like a week away from meeting with my score mentor. So once I, you know, I can put it on paper that I, it's a good experience. But go online, it's called score.org and look at all the resources. But that's mainly what they do. Seminars, they do one-on-one uh, -on -one consultations for, you know, helping you open your business, helping you funding you know, banking recommendations, blah, blah, blah. And then they have the mentors one-on-one. -on -one. Score.org. Score.org, O-R-G. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then uh, do you know any other websites similar to I, I think you know? I don't know the one that you're saying, but if you, if you give me time, I can put a list of websites that I think are good and send it, I send it to Angel, and she can make it available for, for them. Um, I didn't want to go into too much detail because like, I'm afraid if you grab something from a website and then, you know, websites could have 99% fabulous and then something that like may not work for you or whatever. And then, you know, I recommended the website, right? I don't want to kind of own all of that. But I'll, I'll send you like a handful of websites that I think if, if they're good, you know, in general. Anything else, you guys? Uh, so you follow these people on LinkedIn? So some of these people have written books, I've read their books. Um, a specific to following, following Mel Robbins. She is a lady entrepreneur cheerleader. Uh, extraordinary. She, um, more than marketing, she is a sensation with empowering people to their potential, um, you know, helping you with those limiting thoughts and insecurities, you know, like, a, you know, like, she makes you, she gives you the tools to 
go out and, and not be afraid to do things that you don't know, to open business that you never done, and things like that. She's more and more the motivational type of person, okay? Where do you follow her? I follow her on LinkedIn, I follow her on Facebook. But you guys, she has Instagram too. Mm -hmm. she's, she's like media, super media savvy. Mm -hmm. And she has books too. So all of these guys have books that I would highly recommend. Connect with them on LinkedIn or, or Instagram. You're gonna, or go on YouTube. They have tons of videos on YouTube too. They have their YouTube channels too. And then you can check, you know, whatever topic, short video interests you. I love her too. Yes, great. Okay, so now do we have a 25 cent a quarter? Anybody? Um, because I have two people that have been extremely more engaging than the rest. So between these two people, flipping of a coin for a twenty dollar gift card to your to your campus store gift card, campus store gift card. You have. Thank you very much. So it's you and you. What do you want? Heads. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you everyone for coming. Wish you guys the best on finals. <laughs> <laughs> you too. And you know what? If anybody wants to connect with me on LinkedIn,